Hey, what's up everyone? Foxhounder in 313 here. And I'm a day late on this, but I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on Nintendo's E3 2017 Spotlight event. I was going to do this yesterday, right after the event was over, but it, I ended up being really busy. But here we are. It's given me time to really reflect on everything. So first off, th the presentation wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, and going into it over the past week, my expectations were really low because Nintendo had announced that the event would be only 25 minutes long, so I was really off in terms of my predictions. I thought it would be 35 to 45 minutes, but that wasn't the case. But again, my expectations were really low, and... To their credit, they did have some surprises. They did announce some games for 2018, which I didn't think they would do. They announced a Yoshi game coming to the Switch in 2018. They announced a Kirby game coming to the Switch in 2018. They announced Metroid Prime 4, which we didn't get a trailer for that, so that could be a ways off. And we got a trailer for, or not a trailer, we got an announcement for a Pokemon game on the Switch, like a true blue Pokemon RPG but they didn't have a trailer for that, and they said that that could be, uh, or could take more than a year to develop or something like that, so probably 2019 before we see that. Hopefully soon, hopefully it'll come next year, but I kind of doubt it. The Pokemon company, or, the, or Game Freak, just isn't used to HD console development, so yeah, I suspect it'll be a ways off. But yeah, cool stuff. The one thing that really stuck out to me, though, throughout not just this you know, particular presentation, not just Nintendo's presentation, but, but throughout the whole week or weekend of E3 was the lack of third-party game announcements for the Switch. All we saw was what we already knew about. Skyrim, FIFA 18, the Sonic games. That's pretty much it. And I said back a couple of months ago, I said E3 will be the proving ground for third-party support on the Switch. If it's there or if there's enough titles, that's something to build off of. But if it's very minimal to non-existent, I wouldn't count on it being there long-term. And that's the feeling I really got watching pretty much every presentation, not seeing any Switch announcements. Not even seeing, you know, we're not getting Call of Duty on Switch. The Activision has confirmed that. We're not getting the new Assassin's Creed game, which was rumored. If it can't get even that stuff, if it can't get the annualized big multiplayer games, or the or in the case of Assassin's Creed, it's not really a multiplayer game, but if it can't get that annualized stuff, I don't see third-party support being a thing on the Switch. It could be that these developers didn't get their hands on development kits early on, or didn't get them early enough to develop games for the first year. <coughs> Excuse me. That very well could be the case. But if that is the case, then that's on Nintendo for not getting those development kits out sooner. I think there's a bigger problem at the center of all this, and that is that Nintendo just sucks at negotiating with third parties. It has nothing to do with the Switch not being powerful enough to handle these games, because Call of Duty, as you may or may not remember, was on the Wii. The Wii had pretty much every Call of Duty game that generation, and there was a much bigger power gap back then between those consoles, we were talking standard definition versus high definition between the Wii, the PS3, and the Xbox 360. And yet they still got most of the Call of Duty games safe for Modern Warfare 2 during its life cycle. And now it can't get a Call of Duty game. Call of Duty still runs on the same engine, I think, as it did last generation, and it can't get that game. So yeah, I, I don't suspect or I don't believe that third-party support is going to be prevalent on the Switch. We did get an announcement for the Mario Rabbids RPG crossover. And here's the thing, looking at that, Nintendo had nothing to gain from that partnership, had nothing to gain from that crossover. The only people that are going to be interested in playing that game are Mario fans. And Mario fans are already going to buy the Switch to play Mario Odyssey. So they gain nothing from it. Ubisoft has everything to gain because it gives them a chance to reboot the Rabbids uh, IP and if it's successful, then they could bring rabbits to other consoles. But if it flops, it's no big deal. Nintendo should have leveraged that for some support from Ubisoft, should have leveraged that for an Assassin's Creed game, should have leveraged that for Far Cry 5, 
they should have gotten something out of it. And that's why I say Nintendo just sucks at making deals with third parties. And this isn't something that's, you know, new. If you go back to the Wii with Smash Brothers Brawl when they put Snake in there, Nintendo could have gotten something out of that. They could have gotten a port of the Twin Snakes on the Wii. They could have gotten a port of Metal Gear Solid 2 or 3 on the Wii. But they got nothing out of it. You know, Twin Snakes that came out years before that. And the Metal Gear Solid 3 port on the 3DS didn't come out until years later. At that moment, they got zero, zilch, nada, nothing. The next Metal Gear game that came out was Metal Gear Solid 4, and even Smash Brothers Brawl had Gecko in the game, which was basically just promoting a franchise, promoting an exclusive game for another console, for a competing console. N Nintendo just doesn't know what they're doing when it comes to third parties. It's nothing to do with the lack of power. They could get something out of them. But uh, I, I, I get the feeling that Nintendo doesn't think it's all that important. You know, they'll, they'll pay it lip service. They'll, get, they'll develop partnerships with certain developers for a few games here and there, like Platinum or Atlas or Ubisoft. But they're not going to go hard after it. They're not going to go all out. But, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to focus too much on what they didn't have. But it is important to point that out. You know, if you're planning on buying a Switch, you're going to be playing. You're going to be buying it for the first-party stuff. I mean, even when it comes to Japanese support, I thought the Japanese support would be there. I thought it would get the same level of support that that the 3DS got. But we didn't see a heck of a lot from Japanese either. Um, you know, the Switch is struggling to get a freaking Mega Man Legacy collection. The Switch can't get a Disney Afternoon collection which are just a bunch of NES games. I mean, it's it's not looking good in terms of the third-party support. The Switch, E3 to me, really solidified Switch as a great secondary console. It's not if For most people, it's not going to be their primary go-to console because if you all you have is the first-party stuff and then maybe some niche Japanese stuff, you're only going to have a, a literal handful of games to play every year on it. So it's not going to have... It's not going to have, you know, one hit game every single month. And you're going to have months where you're going to get games like Yoshi or Kirby or a Mario Luigi RPG crossover that, if you're like me, you may not necessarily be into. So it's really going to limit, you know, the system's appeal in, in many ways. And also not having, the, not having multi-platform games really limits the games you'll have to play online which is rough because Nintendo plans to charge for it all you're really going to have it seems like at the moment at least is just the first party stuff and you know that's a literal handful of games you're not going to have a lot to choose from when it comes to playing online and I know the service is a lot cheaper but between it not having as many features and not having as many games to play online it's still kind of a hard pill to swallow Outside of all that, though, I was really hoping that Nintendo would announce the Virtual Console. I don't know what's taken them so long with that. And I was really hoping that we would get an announcement for a substantial s Switch update to add things like being able to turn the system on and off with the controller. Maybe an announcement for integrated voice chat. Custom things where you can buy them off of the store and have you know better wallpapers and stuff. And that's definitely stuff that can be announced later on, and hopefully it will be. But, uh, you know, overall, I, I think their presentation was okay. Um, I wasn't particularly blown away by any of the presentations at E3 this year. I think the if I had to pick a quote-unquote winner, uh, for me it would be Microsoft. And this, is comes from, this comes from someone who doesn't have an Xbox One and doesn't plan on picking one up. But I think they had the most, like, game reveals, and they had the most to prove, um, I guess, really outside of Nintendo. Nintendo, I thought, had a little bit to prove, and you know, because this is the first year of their new console. But uh, Microsoft had a lot to prove because they had the Scorpio coming out, and I thought they did fairly well for the most part. And uh, Sony didn't have a lot of reveals. They gave us release dates for a lot of the games they announced last year which I'm really excited about pretty much all of them. Um, Days Gone, God of War, 
Uncharted Lost Legacy. It all looks like good stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway, anyway, let me know. What you, I can't even talk right. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to us if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more gaming news and discussions here on Dorks Like Us. This is Fox Hunter signing off. God bless.